double row repair technique for bursal sided partial thickness rotator cuff tears. Once the bursal sided cuff tear is identified, the footprint of the rotator cuff is then carefully debrided to avoid any damage to the intact fibers of the cuff insertion. Bone marrow vents may be placed at and around the footprint to stimulate a cellular response. A triple loaded helix advanced 5.5 mm peak suture anchor with ortho cord is placed at the most medial margin to create the medial row. Individual suture limbs of the same color are then passed through the rotator cuff flap tissue in a horizontal mattress fashion. This step is repeated for each color coded limbs of the suture anchor. The medial row is then reduced with a sliding knot and alternating half hitches. One limb from each horizontal mattress suture is loaded through the end of a Footprint Ultra PK 4.5 mm suture anchor. A pilot hole is prepared at the lateral edge of the greater tuberosity and the footprint anchor is advanced through the pilot hole completing the lateral row and reducing the cuff tear. Of note, at the surgeon's discretion, an additional suture can be incorporated into the lateral row anchor prior to its insertion. The suture can then be passed through the cuff tissue and tied with a simple knot to further reduce any cuff tissue to the footprint. If a second lateral row anchor is to be used, the remaining limbs from the mattress sutures are incorporated into the anchor and then placed into the greater tuberosity. As seen here, an additional suture is incorporated into the second lateral row anchor and an additional simple knot is tied further reducing the cuff tissue to the footprint. If a single lateral row is to be used, the suture limbs not incorporated into the lateral row anchor are then cut. We present our method for addressing bursal sided partial thickness rotator cuff tears using an in-situ repair technique with double row suture anchors.